Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Jonathan Swan from uh, Operis uh, presenting this afternoon on circularities and iteration, or as we just discussed before the break, um, circularities and iterate, irritation, according to Ben. Um, definitely. Um, what we're going to look at this afternoon is a 45 minute session on looking at um, Excel's um, ability or inability to deal with circular code, um, a workaround using the Excel iteration feature, um, a couple of clever little tricks attached to that. Um, and then a nice little uh, demo at the end of um, how we can use the two uh, to actually uh, detect and locate uh, circular code uh, in our spreadsheets. Um, so quite a bit to cover in this uh, short session. Um, I'm using the uh, Zoom software for our presentation this afternoon, as always. Um, if you haven't seen this before, so there's some names on the list I don't uh, recognize. Um, but if you haven't used that Zoom before, if you just jiggle your mouse around, you'll see a little toolbar appearing. Uh, and on the toolbar are various um, features you can use to uh, raise your hand in response to or to draw our attention. Um, you can uh, uh, send a message by the chat box. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague uh, Ben Lyon over there who's monitoring uh, the windows there to see if anyone's sending any questions. Do feel free to scribble away. Um, and I'm talking at the moment. Um, <laughs> And the question has to be, can you hear me? So if you can't hear me or if there's any problems with that, please uh, send a note now so that we can uh, try and address any um, audio or other technical problems. Um, but if you're happy with that, um, I'll kick off then with the idea of um, talking through the issue of circularities. Uh, for many people, um, they are a pain in the backside. They're a frequent feature, usually as models develop in complexity. Um, and um, you start finding uh, interconnections between blocks of code uh, that perhaps you hadn't realized were there before. Um, and there are many ways of dealing with them. Quite often, you, you'll just see the irritating dialog box and, and dive straight in. But sometimes they can be rather more complex and more subtle to try and resolve. And that's what we're going to try and cover this afternoon. And so we uh, kick off very simply with um, the idea of what is the circularity all about. Um, I think that, uh, in simple terms, a formula that directly or indirectly refers to itself is how I've always described it. Uh, Microsoft now in their very patronizing dialog box uh, offer a description that FYI, a circular reference could be a formula that refers to its own value uh, or refers to a cell dependent on its own value. I don't know whether that's an improvement, but uh, that's what you see in the dialog box. We'll see very shortly when I provoke one of these. Um, what we're going to consider then is handling circularities, uh, considering uh, both accidental circularities, which is the sort of end game of this, um, and the deliberate circularity where the piece of code you're attempting to work with uh, is inherently circular. Uh, I've got a couple of Mickey Mouse uh, demos to take you through for that, um, but I'm sure you can extrapolate uh, to more complex things, and certainly the, the one I'm going to finish with um, is as near as reality as we can get. Um, so. The points I want to get across to you then is iteration, do, we, do you use it? Uh, are we allowed to use it is one question. Um, you do find organizations, uh, financial institutions, banks, for example, uh, who have a blanket ban on the use of iteration, and therefore their poor analysts spend their weekends trying to resolve uh, calculations and code in a non-circular way. Um, we're going to assume then that the iteration is there. Uh, quite often in our experience, we'll come across iteration being used by uh, not so much the, the trained modeler, uh, but by the consultant, the external type who's uh, knocked together a big spreadsheet and they've learned about iteration somewhere in their Excel training and they simply switched on and, and they hand over the result uh, for you to marvel at or to be deeply concerned about, whichever. Um, the issues are going to be uh, how to switch it on in the first place, where is it? Um, and then a couple of things, and if we are using iteration, we need to understand convergent circularities and divergent circularities. Uh, we'll see those in just a moment. Uh, but also then uh, a knock-on effect of the whole idea of a circularity is the concept of a non-calculating dependent cell. And uh, we need to be able to be quite clear about uh, what those expressions mean and how then they have implications for the way that we work with deliberate or any other uh, type of circularity. So as always, flicking to my spreadsheet, and uh, as I... Uh, Point out, I've got this Mickey Mouse version. Some of you have seen this before. It's an example I use in a number of my advanced training courses. Um, although at Operus we, we are mindful of the risk of using iteration, um, it's the sort of thing that on a training course I think people are um, required to know about. Whether or not they ever come to use this technique ever again in the future um, is another story, but certainly uh, if you're uh, describing yourself as a reasonably competent or advanced modeler, you need to know what the issues are. 
so that then you can explain to others how dangerous uh, these techniques uh, can be if they're not fully thought through or understood. Uh, so what I have here then, uh, with no apologies for simplicity, and uh, again, some of you will have seen this before, um, but we've got the interest calculation. Um, I'm going to assume this is a, 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 some form of cash shortfall or overdraft. Um, so I've run up an overdraft of 100. By the end of the period, it's 200. And I'm going to be penalized with a whacking rate 10% of interest. Now, in a manual process, I could solve this by saying, well, if I do the average balance technique, and, and I'm, interest here, you'll accept, is just a, a vehicle for me to go through the issue of the circularity. Um, that, that don't get hung up on other ways of calculating interest. There are many, and I'm not recommending for a moment that you pursue the circular one in preference to any other technique. Uh, it's simply just to go through what the idea is here. So I want to calculate interest, um, average balance method, uh, and so in this case, then 100 uh, plus 200 is uh, 300 divided by 2, 150, multiplied by the 10% interest rate, and that gives me a charge of 15. So I'm going to type that in. Um, the outcome of the 15 of interest is, given that this is an overdraft, I have no cash from which to pay it, so it's going to increase the overall liability. So again, manually for the moment, I'm going to increase my uh, closing balance to 215 to reflect the new balance, uh, the, sorry, the new interest charge. That means then, using the average balance method, that the 15 of interest now is increased. So it goes up to 15.7, which means I need to recalculate the balance, and that's 15.7, which makes the new balance, oh, sorry, the new interest charge 15.8, 7.8, and that makes the uh, revised balance 7.8, and I can go around a few times, 9. And uh, nine. And Ben's getting bored with this, so I'm going to stop in a second. Uh, you can see where it's going. Uh, absurd, absurd levels of accuracy here, uh, which I'm not overly impressed with, but it gets the job done. Uh, and after a few of these iterations, because that's what I'm doing, of course, uh, I've got the uh, sensible figure there for interest, and that reflects the appropriate charge I want to um, reflect in the, in the financial statement. Um, that's me doing it manually. I'm not going to do it if this is a 25-year forecast period calculated quarterly and I've got 100 columns. I'm simply not going to do this. So I'm going to invite Excel to do the pro whole process for me. So let me put my figures back how they were. So 200, and I now want to calculate interest using the average balance and using the average function in Excel. So the average of the opening balance and the closing balance uh, BF is brought forward, CF is carry forward, if you're not familiar with those expressions that we tend to use here. Uh, multiply the uh, average by the um, interest rate of 10%. Is that circular? No, there's no problem with that at all. That's the one-off calculation of the interest. Uh, what is circular then is this rather trivial approach then where I'm going to try and add that balance back into the carry forward, which of course at the moment is a hard-coded value, but forgive me while I just convert that to, oops, into a formula. Just bear with me. Two press too many times. There we go, uh, add the balance, and that then should kick off the circularity. There's the patronizing FYI down with the kids approach that Microsoft are, are digging at the moment. Um, I choose OK then to acknowledge the warning. Um, I pause at this stage because I've been teaching this for far too long, uh, and over the many, many years uh, I work with uh, delegates in the training room, it's surprising how frequently people. We just go straight past this dialogue box and you speak to them an hour later or something and say, you've gone circular, did you see any warnings? And they claim, no, they didn't. Um, there's something about this that just doesn't engage people's attention. I think Microsoft needs to change its color or make it flash or, or have all the numbers disappear or something more drastic. Uh, but people do tend to ignore this. So I choose OK. Uh, now we're into the realms of Excel's very poor um, handling of error, uh, this type of error. I'm sure there's a rationale behind it. Um, there's sort of vague attempts to deal with things here, but as we'll see shortly, in particular when we see the big one at the end, uh, Excel's uh, functionality here is, is deeply limited. Um, what I can see then, a couple of diagnostics kick off. Firstly, the big blue lines. That, that normally grabs people's attention. But as we're about to see, these blue lines uh, tend to be ephemeral. They can be there one second, you, you do a piece of work, and suddenly they're gone and then a few minutes later they reappear, uh, and so they're not desperately diagnostic. Um, another uh, feature I would watch out for before we look at the numbers themselves is down on the status bar. 
and I've got a warning there, circular reference is D9. Now this is uh, reasonably handy, again as we get to see a bit later, it's not brilliant in itself, um, but that's typically what I'll do when I'm wandering around a classroom or working with a client or whatever. Uh, I just kind of glance down at the bottom left of the screen there to see if there are any circularities. So if their balance sheet doesn't balance, I think there's a more burning issue, which is the circularity, uh, which probably means that's why the balance sheet doesn't balance in the first place. So I'd work with that information first. Uh, the other thing I draw your attention to, uh, it's slightly more diagnostic in my opinion, is that the 200 balance that we started with has now gone to zero. Now, some of you know, I've been uh, writing stuff for years and asking Bill Gates, dear Bill, could we please have something uh, as useful as a circular error value? Uh, Bill Gates doesn't answer my emails, as you know. Um, and so the, the help that we could get from uh, error value um, is not there. And what we're left with then is these rather um, dubious uh, techniques, such as looking for zeros, unexpected zeros in the, in the spreadsheet. Now, if this section genuinely was as, uh, an overdraft, and I've now got zero balance, well, on a quick inspection, then I, I don't think there's anything to worry about. It looks like the financing problem has been resolved. There's no overdraft, no cash shortfall, and so I'd move on. Um, am I necessarily going to carry out on the fly the uh, mental arithmetic of 100 plus zero divided by two is 50 times 10%, the interest then should be five? Uh, and the answer is probably no, I wouldn't do that, particularly again if it's my 25 year forecast period calculated quarterly. Um, so we, we don't have a huge amount here to grab our attention other than uh, the blue lines that you can see at the moment and other than the warning on the uh, status bar. So let's um, sort of park it there for a moment. Uh, one thing before I move on is just to point out if I change input, uh, I don't get any output change at this stage. Uh, and so something serious is going on there. The model stopped calculating. And that's a significant observation because I can still see some numbers, in this case only the, the, the interest itself, but why is that still there when the balance now is zero? And what something is locked up. We're, we're a bit unsatisfied as what's going on there. Uh, what I'm going to do next then is leap straight into the uh, iteration to resolve this. This is how I've been asked to calculate interest, for example. Uh, I have no choice in the matter, it says so in the loan agreement, do it this way. And so I'm going to resolve this by firing up iteration, which is extremely well hidden. Uh, again, it's one of those things, people don't spot the dialog box uh, warning. <laughs> people then uh, claim that they, they didn't know that they'd switched on the iteration. It's so well hidden, file, options, formulas. You really have to dig around to find this. And if you didn't know it was there, you would never find it. <laughs> And there's no magic keyboard shortcut either. People are always testing me on my knowledge of shortcuts. I can tell you there is no magic shortcut that automatically puts on iteration. Uh, you have to go in and find it. So switch on the iteration. Can I draw your attention at this stage then to the maximum iterations and the maximum change? I'll come back to those two points in just a moment. Uh, if I choose OK, back in the spreadsheet then, there's the numbers I predicted. And I've got uh, the model recalculating. Um, no blue lines now, um, and also if I change input, I get output change, which is rather good. It looks like everything's been fixed. Uh, can I further draw your attention then down to the status bar where I now have the circular warning replaced with calculate. Now, I'm sure it would take Bill Gates programmers five minutes to write the appropriate code that that would say iterate if the iteration's on. Uh, unfortunately, they left it so it simply says calculate because there's the iteration, as we'll see, uh, is a global tool. It's, it's a, it's a uh, part of the recalculation engine. And so by changing a, a calculation setting like that, the only prompt you'll get there is calculate, which you normally see, of course, uh, when you've got your manual recalculation. And it's a prompt. Uh, if you've got the manual calculation, like all my colleagues next door have, um, they're in the habit of tapping F9 every now and then to follow the prompt, uh, which is to force a recalculation. Uh, if I press F9 on my keyboard, I can see flickering numbers in the circular section here, but they're not changing, and nor does the calculate prompt disappear. So that is the indication, and it's the only subtle indication, uh, that I've now got iteration on, and uh, it's solving a circularity. It is not simply that iteration is on, as you'll see shortly. It's only if iteration on solving a circularity that it says calculate. Now, let's, let's observe all of that and marvel at it. Um, 
the answer we've generated here for the interest is based on the manual process I did of just repeating the calculation over, which is what iteration is. And what's happened here is um, Excel's reached a maximum change constraint. Now, if you remember back with my slide a few moments ago, uh, I pointed out the idea then of the uh, types of circularity, convergent circularity and divergent. So the example I've just shown you then is, is a convergent circularity. Uh, the maximum change applies, no further change to those numbers will happen unless the input changes. So what's this idea of a divergent circularity? And typically these uh, are more common. Um, I'm going to be very naughty now, and again, if you've seen this before, just humor me. Uh, but this is the idea of, of, of a, t a tax calculation. Um, now, I nip down the corridor. I go and see uh, Morag, who's the head of our tax accounting team. I explain what I'm trying to do. She says, Jordan, this is how you do it. She writes the solution on a piece of paper, so I'm being a very lazy modeler now. I'm just copying her solution onto my spreadsheet without really engaging my brain. And so I'm writing this nonsense. And I'm writing my big tax formula I don't really understand. Um, perish the thought. Uh, but there we go, the sum of D12 to D14. I do hope you can see at this point that D14 is in fact the formula cell um, uh, and I've got it inside the brackets. So when I choose enter, of course, that should be a straight circularity. But alas, no. Um, Excel will accept that um, circularity and it goes ahead and calculates it, goes ahead and iterates it, in fact. Um, and it's now following the other um, aspect of the iteration option and that is that this is a controlled by the maximum iteration. Now let's have a quick look in the dialog box for that. Uh, Alt F T, it's too slow. Sometimes I go faster with my shortcuts the next Excel can respond so bear with me. Uh, options, there we go. And I'll show you what we're talking about then. Um, maximum iterations then is set in here as is the maximum change. Now you know from experience Excel has a maximum of 15 decimal places. So that's the uh, greatest uh, maximum change you can set. Um, with the maximum iterations, it's uh, 32,727 or some strange little number like that. There you go, so 32,767. Um, that's how you could go if you really felt like firing up an iteration over a weekend. Um, but those are the two settings. And notice, please, that there is no differentiation. Excel doesn't say, I'm going to apply one and not the other. Excel looks at this on a calculation by calculation basis in the calculation, recalculation sequence and applies whichever of these two constraints um, matters for a particular uh, piece of code. So I've left it switched on, as you can see, to come back into the spreadsheet. Oh, there's my keyboard shortcut dropping out there. Oh, can you see that? I, I, I'm effectively just writing. I just press enter there uh, after deleting something. But I can simulate what I'm doing here by pressing F9 to continue working elsewhere in the spreadsheet. I'm having a look at the balance sheet, for example. I'm now looking at some of the inputs. And every time the model recalculates, well, nothing happens here because this is the convergent circularity. And that's the maximum change. But this one down here, every second I look at it, it changes because this is running one plus two effectively 100 times each time. So every time the model recalculates, it kicks off the iteration sequence as well. So after a few moments, you can see that my tax bill for this project is bigger than the GDP of the country in which the project is set. Uh, and clear nonsense. And again, um, as I always uh, point out, this is designed to be entertaining. One plus two makes 2,700. Ha ha. Uh, that's the message you're supposed to take away. Um, but in reality, of course, you realize that these can be much more subtle than that. And it can be quite difficult to see these things. So if we reflect on this, then we've used iteration to solve uh, a deliberate formula. Uh, and I had no choice in that. I had to use the average there. Um, I switched on the iteration, and I then carried on working. And of course, the risk of circular code happens while you're writing that code. And so you're doing a big, long Friday afternoon slog through a debt service reserve account and all sort of little bits and bobs like that. Um, and iteration is on. Uh, if you go circular in that type of calculation, you won't now know about it. Ideally, if you do go circular with the iteration on, you'll see changing numbers. But again, this is my deliberate um, example that should be quite obvious that numbers are changing when the model recalculates. Um, but we need to be quite convinced then that if we are using iteration, that we can use it safely. And so what I'm going to do is, first of all, switch off the iteration. File, options. So well hidden, isn't it? People could always claim to be, oh, I didn't know I'd done that. There it is. I've switched it off. Now, remember, I've got two different circularities kicking around now. I've got my deliberate circularity, my interest routine, and I've got the piece of junk in my tax routine. 
But there we go, it's exactly the same dialog box warning that we saw with the very first circularity. And in the top line there, you can see it's again very patronizing, we found it, or well, who's we, is the thing I always ask, one or more circular references. Excel's not clever enough to enumerate them for you. It's just shrugging its shoulders and passing the blame onto you then. You, you knock yourself out, you go and find it. Uh, and this is again where we get to the difficult stage. Choose OK, there are the blue lines. And I've got a circular warning down here, uh, the reference to D9. But what about this reference? Apparently, I can't see any links to this, that this is circular, circular at all. Um, a little tip, it's not very valuable, so don't write it down, but F9, Ben asked me about the shortcuts to, to, to send out today. There are no shortcuts today. Uh, so I'm pressing F9. Can you see the cell referencing down there changing? And so it's flipping from the uh, uh, D9 reference, and every now and then it goes down to D14, and then D8. Okay, so there's no real structure behind it, and I'm pressing F9, it's not particularly uh, focused, it's just picking out cells. Um, in, the, in the pathway. Now, let, let's take this a little step further then. So let me just take out the uh, deliberate circularity for a second, and I'll take out the labels as well. Um, the issue I've got then is that that formula is the one I've been required to write, and I know then it's circular, but also I notice then that that formula can be resolved using Excel's iteration. Um, and with that knowledge in mind then, I'm thinking about, could I make this formula conditional? So could I have it in some way following the iteration status? So whatever iteration is, if it's on, then do the average, and if it's off, then I don't return zero, which is non-circular. So given that line of thinking, uh, I'm going to put in an if. Uh, some of you may have seen my other webinars where we do a systematic demolition job on the use of if, uh, but in this case, it's pretty good, because it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. So if, and then the test condition, stumps me at this point because I want to write something about the iteration status. Um, and the problem that we've now got is the iteration status uh, described earlier as part of the uh, calculation or recalculation engine in Excel. So effectively it's in the Excel environment. It's not in the physical spreadsheet. So I can write an if that looks at a cell or something in the spreadsheet, content of the spreadsheet, but this is now looking outside. And the question is how do I ask this iteration question? And simply put, you can't do anything like that. Is iteration on or is iteration true? It, it can't be done because Excel won't know what iteration is. So what we do instead is this little trick. Um, up the top here somewhere, I'm going to write a test condition. And my test condition follows the same logic as an if. It, it's either going to be true or it's going to be false. But Excel's not clever enough in this context to work out the, the veracity of that. Is it true? Is it false? So we have a little bit of user input. Um, if I look at my screen then, I can see the blue lines and I can see the warning on the status bar. So it's pretty clear to me that iteration's off. In an Excel speak, that's false. So I set that to false. I come down to the interest formula and I'm simply going to pop in there, a little test then. Remember, if requires test condition, if I know it's true or false. Well, there's my test condition, which Excel itself can't answer, but there's the answer to the test condition. And that's all I actually need for that formula. Okay, so you don't need to say, is D2 equal to true or D2 equal to false? That's a tautology, it doesn't mean anything. All we need then is the response to the question. So with false in there, the if has failed, as I go jump straight across all of that, and then drop comma zero as the false outcome at the end of the if test. Okay, so what we should see now is that, that the uh, formula values to zero, you can see as well, the 200 reappears and on the status bar, you can see that there is no circularity. So this circular code is dependent on the content of that cell there. If it's set to false, there is no circularity in this spreadsheet. So should we test it? Again, the time consuming file uh, options, uh, iteration on, which is in the formulas tab there, iteration, and choose OK. Nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens is, again, that user input is required. Uh, we need to tell Excel what we've just done. It can't work it out for itself. So I'm now going to change that to true, and I get that. So it's working. So my deliberate code that's using circular uh, calculations and using the iteration to solve, fine. That, that is all now controlled by this. This, um, in passing, is called a switch. And I'm not going to bore you with range names, but that's what I would normally name that cell, switch, because it's binary, true or false, on or off. 
I'm now going to uh, repeat the uh, rather silly um, tax calculation from before. So I'm going to add all of that up, including D14 into the formula, and there's the silly result. Notice I don't need to select that cell to make it go crazy. It's anywhere. Whenever the model recalculates, wherever the active cell may be, that form is going to go berserk, as you can see, absolute rubbish. Um, so having said that it's rubbish, I now know that I'm using iteration. I know that it's a risky process. So I know that I could be masking junk elsewhere in the spreadsheet. And I'm just about to show this to the boss or to the client or whatever. Um, and I realize then I'm in a dodgy position. So I want to make sure that I don't have any inadvertent circularities elsewhere in the spreadsheet before I do any reporting. So I know what to do now. Um, typically, I go set this to false because that would disable my deliberate, my known circularity. Um, I would then switch off the iteration. The shortcut should be working out, FTF, F, all tight. There we go. And I get the circular warning. Well, clearly then, my deliberate circularity has been suspended because I've controlled it with the switch mechanism. So if I've got a warning, there must be one or more other circularities that perhaps I didn't know about elsewhere in the spreadsheet. Now, typically, of course, if your users are doing this sort of thing, or if you're doing this sort of thing, uh, you will automatically get the habit of just if I know this is circular, I know I'm going to use iteration, stick the switch test in there. Accidental code, of course, you didn't know it was problematic, but by definition, it's an accident. So you go in there, you find it, fix it, delete it, whatever you need to, and the circularity is now gone. But in passing, you then notice that having resolved the uh, tax calculation, the original circular code now reads zero for interest. Now, this is an important point, and even within Opera, there's a bit of a debate here. Uh, my preference is to acknowledge that this technique is so dangerous um, that I would prefer that if I've disabled it, albeit temporarily, uh, the thing that I'm calculating, the circular, the interest, uh, reads zero. Because if I forget this, I hand it over to a user who doesn't understand all this switch and iteration stuff, um, then they're not going to tamper with it. So the outcome then would be that they would look at their income statement and see a line there that says zero interest which would hopefully catch somebody's attention who'd then be able to ask the question, well, where's the interest gone? The argument, the debate um, that we have and others have is that false outcome could be something like the opening balance times the rate, which means then that when your switch is false, you get a fake number. Now, I don't like that. I think it's unethical to an extent because that means I would now have fake numbers on the income statement. And if this was being used genuinely for, for debt calculations, uh, interest is part of debt service and therefore it would affect the debt service ratio calculations as well. It's the wrong number. I would much, and it's more likely to slip through any casual inspection or end user inspection. And so I would then have to be in this awful position of realizing in a week's time that the model I've sent out has actually got the wrong numbers in it. I'd much rather explain the zero than I would explain the wrong number. So that's the little debate we have. What, why do colleagues here, even at Opera, argue for this? It's simply because they want to see the impact of interest on dependent calculations. So they want to see interest going into tax and into other bits of the model, um, rather than just having zeros all over the place. But you know, if this is being used genuinely, I probably would like to see this off. Um, on my course last week, somebody then said, well, why don't you have a little uh, message in there, like iteration off or something? Alas, <laughs> that's a very, very tempting thing to do. Uh, you get that. You get error values all over the place because that is now text. Uh, so clever as that idea is, elegant as the idea is, unfortunately it won't work. So let me just restore the formulas back how they were. Um, I now want to tack into another concept that was on my slide, and that's the idea of non-calculating dependent cells. This is all part of the circular stuff. It sits uh, above the uh, iteration uh, idea, um, but the the concept of the non-calculating uh, dependent cell is, as I just mentioned, interest has an impact on tax uh, because we deduct interest from our earnings, our profits, and once uh, the, the profits have been adjusted, we then feed them into the tax calculation, and the tax then is paid from the project cash flow, and there's the extension of the, the big network of connections I was describing earlier. Uh, what we discover, as you saw a few minutes ago, is when this went circular, um, we had um, a, a lockup. So nothing calculated. I changed the input and the output didn't change. Well, it's worse than that because what we would then see is the interest of zero, for example, um, feeds into my profits um, and they don't calculate. 
They're not circular, but they don't calculate. So that is a bit of a worry because those profits then feed into the tax, which itself is not circular, but doesn't calculate. Tax then goes into the project ca uh, cash flow, which isn't circular, but there we go. The whole thing locks up. And that means that you could end up with virtually all the output sheets being locked up and nothing actually happening. And you, uh, you run a sensitivity, for example, and discover that changing the uh, uh, price that you're setting or your cost profile has no impact on the key results. So this is pretty nasty stuff. So that's why I'm going to finish off this session by showing you uh, not good things about using iteration, because I would urge caution with this. Um, there are, you know, if I had to do this particular interest calculation, I'd be thinking already about macros uh, on a previous webinar. I think we, we, we showed how to write a macro that would, would uh, do a copy paste value and just uh, iterate, say, 10 times or something. Um, but I'm not going to pursue that. Um, I, I, I've thrown out the issue, I've thrown out what the circularity is. We've looked at the use of iteration in solving uh, the problem here. Um, but even then, I suspect most of you sitting there saying, yeah, it's really interesting, Jonathan, but it's not how we work. Um, but at least you've got the heads up. At least you now know if you see a model coming in from outside and it says calculate on the status bar and you press F9, it still says calculate. You know then you've got the iteration on. Uh, a final point before I go into my uh, error detection uh, demonstration. I did mention this issue of uh, calculate and iteration um, and the specifics of what it applies. Um, if I go into file options and switch the iteration on, so advanced and advanced, well, yeah, formulas, there we go, iteration on, okay. and I sit back in my chair and take, <laughs> take a note from Ben so I'm not paying any attention anymore. Um, notice then I switch the iteration on, but perhaps I've neglected to remember to change the switch. So notice then, as I, I warned you, there is no warning on the status bar. The iteration is on. It only says iterate if there is a circularity being calculated. So watch what happens. If you look down at the bottom of the screen there as I press enter, okay, there it says calculate. If I just leave it as false, iteration is on, but I don't know it. There's no indication anywhere that this is happening. And this happens re reasonably frequently. Uh, people then do pick up the message message about the iteration, they leave the switch on false, they, haven't, they claim they haven't changed the setting, but of course the, the setting is whatever it was before, and it's, as we just saw, it, it's true. And so in good faith they go off and do their further calculations, and then don't realise the numbers have gone wrong, because they're going to sit back and say, Jonathan, I, ha I haven't touched anything, that the switch says false. So you need to be aware then that there is no physical connection between the iteration status, which is out there in the recalculation engine, and the physical spreadsheet in front of us. We provide that co uh, connection, so we need to uh, say what's going on. I'll show you the flip side of that if I may. I'm just going to set it to true, just to prove that it works. Now there's the calculate on the status bar. I then go to file, uh, options, uh, formulas, and I switch the iteration off. And same principle then, as I switch it off, the model goes circular. Okay, and last week's course we had lots of fun with this, people forgetting what that business is all about. It's gone circular because as far as Excel is concerned with these formulas, it's still trying to work through the true in the if. Remember, Excel has got no idea what that formula is doing. It just knows that there is a test condition that evaluates the true and it's trying to do the average, which is the circular calculation of the interest. Okay, so there is no connection. If you're using this approach, and we do recommend if you are using iteration, then go in, set up a switch, drive the calculations using that. But in this case, um, realize that you can be telling uh, uh, some mistruth. I'm lying, I suppose. <laughs> circular references D9 um, is telling you it's circular, despite what that's saying. Iteration isn't on. So I'm just going to set that to five just to clear the whole thing. Can I just look at a couple of questions that arrive? Uh, Marco is asking me, would using a corkscrew account oh yeah, be the best way to do the interest rate calculation correctly without having to do an iteration? Uh, Marco, you, you, you're quite right. That, um, again, uh, I was just using iterate and interest as the vehicle to illustrate this particular problem. Um, I, I, I always try and point out it, it, interest would not be done this way. Uh, corkscrew, use the opening balance technique with probably a sensible way of doing it. Uh, the way I've set up my uh, little corkscrew routine here is, is merely to show you the um, uh, iteration issue and, and the problems attached to it. So I'm um, grateful for the question, but don't get hung up on, on, on interest for this one. So uh, thank you for the uh, useful question. There's a second question I've got. Uh, so uh, Kevin, uh, wouldn't the error text make more sense as it provides, even if it provides a value error? The reason is the value error is there 
because there is a mistake that needs correcting. You're quite right, um, Kevin. Um, what, what Kevin's picking up is I just showed you with the uh, error outcome for this. Uh, and you can actually have a, a typed in error. Um, if I did what I had before, um, which provoked the, um, is it uh, this provoked the uh, value error. Um, the risk I have, uh, and uh, Kevin, you, you're quite right to think on these lines, but the trouble is um, value could be caused by anything. There could be a genuine error somewhere in the spreadsheet, such as a, a real piece of text feeding into another set of calculations that's not linked to this. Uh, so you're quite right, you know, provoke an error that's specific, but it may not be linked to um, the, the issue here of the iteration. So if you saw value on your income statement, is it because iteration's off, or is it because there's a broken calculation somewhere else? So, so I'm cautious about that, but I can see exactly your line of thinking. Uh, I, I'll just, uh, as you've asked that, uh, one thing I did see a couple of years ago from an East European uh, analyst, actually quite clever, uh, type in some absurdly big number. I think this will satisfy Kevin. So if I do uh, E 10 to the 10, uh, I don't think there are any, um, that's exponential, uh, there are no numbers in a normal model of that magnitude. So if I start seeing these things all over the place, E here doesn't sound for error, does it? It means big number. So perhaps Kevin, that might uh, address the issue for you, that when you start seeing absurdly large numbers on the output sheet, then there's probably uh, iterations have been switched off. Uh, I quite like that, but it, it did get a bit messy when we looked at the final model. Uh, so uh, I just throw that out in answer to your question. Um, but um, I'm satisfied myself because I've been using this for years. I'm reasonably confident about dealing with the, this type of calculation. I'll just set it to zero for the time being. But very good question. Thank you both for, for asking that. Uh, what I'm going to do is make a connection specifically then, um, in fact, with Kevin's observation there, to show you how I would um, actually use these techniques in combination to detect the circularity in the first place. So if I just uh, dismiss this file for a moment, uh, you'll see what I mean if I open up this uh, monster file. It's one of the biggest ones I use for teaching purposes. So um, prompt there to open it as read only, I'll go with that. And then as the file opens, I get the, the circular warning. Uh, now this is near as I can ever get to showing a real operas model. It's one I did for an American client last year with some pretty heavy tax in it. Um, but what I've done here is I've, I've populated it with a circularity in, in the, the time-honored way of uh, typically when I'm on site with clients, uh, people flip open their laptops and say, oh, Jonathan, while you're here, can you just have a quick look at this? Uh, and this does happen reasonably regularly. Uh, so I've got a spreadsheet that claims it's circular. Now, remember what I was saying earlier about looking at the uh, status bar to identify the, 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 the warning that comes up there? Uh, this is the um, input sheet. I'm using the Opera's methodology, make no apology uh, for that. So I've got inputs working as outputs. Um, so circular on C111 on the input sheet, okay, let's flick past that. Working sheet E339, but I get to the output sheets, and if you know our methodology, there shouldn't be any calculation on the output sheets. That's C43, C43, okay, um, H30, I'm on the cash flow, I'm not going to go too far with this. Uh, income statement A021, A, sorry, A021, what's that, what, what's that column all about? Uh, financial position is back to C, C C, C28, which is way off on the side of the screen now. So the referencing there isn't wildly useful. And if I start, well, again, think about it. The, the, the circular warning there should only really describe the cells in the circular path. But unfortunately, the mechanism that Microsoft used here uh, uh, actually works on the concept of the non calculating dependent cell idea that I mentioned earlier. So it's anything that is not just in the circular path, but in the whole uh, de path of de dependency, right through to the output sheets. So that referencing down there isn't particularly informative at this stage. So I'm going to show you how I would crack finding a circularity in a model like this. Again, don't get hung up on what this model is, but it's, it's big, I can tell you that. If I just go into one of these rows here, just whack across the end of the row, there you go, column CJ, all the way across there. It's it's not 30 years, uh, yeah, it's 30 years, isn't it? 30 years calculated quarterly, it's big stuff, this. Uh, so <laughs> there is a spread, there's a circularity in here somewhere. Uh, if we page down to look through this sheet, oh, there we go, some blue lines appearing. And again, as I said, they're not wildly diagnostic. Uh, let's just go back to the top of that. Sorry, I didn't whack straight past it. Financing cash flow in row 157 appears to be the top at, um, uh, end of it. If I go down, page down, page down, page down, page down, page down, uh, all the way down to, let's see, uh, cash cascade down here to row three, four, one. It's about ooh, 100, 
hundred odd rows involved in this circularity, so it's pretty big. Now, how am I going to try and, and, and resolve where it is? It's enormous. With the blue lines, you do get these little uh, uh, dots to indicate nodes that are in the circular path, but again, they're not wildly reliable. This is how I would go about doing it, and it, I'm grateful for Kevin's question because it sort of leads in directly to how we do this. Uh, what I would do typically, and I actually did this last year because we had a fairly nasty model coming through, I'm going to introduce my own error. Now, following what I said about Kevin's stuff there, I've just had a quick glance through this file that, that there are no other error values anywhere that I can see at the moment. So I'm pretty clear that if I introduce an error of my own, then it's because of what I've just written. So I'm going to go right to a very early input. By early, I mean this is right at the top of the audit trail, the inflation, because this is a nominal uh, cash flows model, so I imagine that inflation drives pretty much everything. So I'm just going to provoke a divide by zero error by taking that input. I'm keeping the input there, I'm not overwriting it, I'm just uh, changing it to divide by zero. And you know what's going to happen there. I'll get a divide by zero error. And I'm going to copy it across the row then. So on the input sheet itself, I've now got a whole mass of errors, which should then blast the way right the way through the working sheet which is now an absolute disaster as you can see there um, flicking through to the outputs it looks a complete mess okay i can't get away with this can i um, in passing because this is where we're going in terms of error resolution we're looking for the circularity i can see places where the error doesn't appear so i'm on the income statement it says depreciation i've got a number there so that's telling me it's not in the circular pathway or indeed anything pathway at the moment uh, in terms of what's calculating through and i can see an interest value but, but let's prove a point let's prove a point so what i'm going to do if this wakes up i'm going to go back to my working sheet what's happened here is the error has flowed through the the, the, the non-circular part of the model and I can see at various points, like the capex here and at various other points. Well, remember what we said about circularities, they, they stop calculating. So what I've done is I've introduced an error that's flowed through the working part, the clean part of the spreadsheet, and then it hits the, the, the log jam of where the circularity is. But unfortunately, there are several sections that are non-circular, so the error appears in different locations. So here's the clever little trick. I'm going to go back and switch on the iteration. F, T, F, all time. Okay, not because I'm using any circular calculations as such for interest or anything else here. I'm just switching on the iteration because I've got a circularity. Now, what's going to happen at this point? Let me choose OK. Um, it's probably not visible on the screen, but what's happened now, because we now know how iteration works, Excel is, is iterating all the calculations, circular calculations, everything. And so that error has now flowed through the blockage where the actual circularity is, and flown right through as if the model was completely non-circular in the first place. So we saw it's quite bad a few moments ago, but now when I look at the output sheets, I'm pressing F9 just to force the issue through. Uh, not too worried about the executive summary, but the cash flow now is a car crash. Um, again, spotted earlier, CapEx doesn't appear to be involved here. And strangely, neither does the senior debt or the equity down here. Flicking through to the income statement, it's uh, again the depreciation, well that's part of the CapEx we're just looking at. Uh, and again, one single interest value is being shown and get to the balance sheet, uh, the PPE, that's the, uh, again, part of the CapEx, that's okay. Uh, equity, well, we've got picked up that already, and down here, senior debt. So senior debt and CapEx, I think I'm gonna to put to one side. Uh, I can see as well, payables look okay, which is rather interesting. Um, so whatever we've got then is now flowing through as if the model was working normally. It's all calculating because of the iteration. What I'm gonna do is another clever little trick and I flick back to the working sheet. So I switch the iteration on. The error has now flowed through the whole model, all the way through. If I switch the iteration off, you'll see what happens in a moment. Switch it off, choose OK. So it's now completely locked up. Uh, where's the circular warning gone? Okay, I'm getting a bit worried there. It should be circular at this stage. Um, what I'm going to do is restore the model back how it was. So back on the input sheet. And take that out. And that's just 3% is the original value. There we go. There's the circularity. Uh, the error message was, was breaking things up there. But now I've got the circularity reappearing. Choose OK. There it is. And the iteration was, was masking all that circular stuff as we expected. Uh, again, I've got a circular reference warning for this sheet. But now if I go back to the working sheet, the blue lines have gone red, which is exciting. But what's happened then is 
by switching on the iter remember, error first into the working sheet that blocked at the point of the circularity. Iteration on, open the floodgates, the circularity, the, the, the error message sorry, floods through everything right through to the outputs. Switch the iteration off and everything freezes and then make the correction on the input. And that then uh, feeds through to the non-circular part of the spreadsheet. So now as I go back to the top of the working sheet, I can see there are no errors at all. There were lots previously, the whole thing was filled up. But then I start seeing sections that do have errors. The reasons that these contain errors is because they're not calculating. Okay, so the only instance of divide by zero errors is in the circular pathway. Okay, well yes, also the non-calculating dependent cells, as you can see as I go to the output sheets, but certainly here's the cash flow. All of this now is showing values, and then I've got errors appearing further down. So already I've screened out part of the model that isn't worthy of attention for debugging the circularity. Also then, um, and it's only coincidental that this is uh, changed to, to, to red, uh, it will change color again in a moment. Um, the formula, again, I've got range names in here, so don't get too excited about range names, but I'm looking at that formula there. Uh, it's quite a chunky formula, there's an awful lot going on in there. Uh, it's got interest that we've been talking about, dividends, equity, and so forth. Um, little tip, um, and please don't write this one down either, but what you tend to find is that with formulas that were or are in the circular path, if you press F2 and enter, they tend to evaluate it to zero because they can't calculate. So the error message disappears. So if they had values in them, uh, the value would then be zero. Uh, these errors go to zero, and that's one way of working out a circular path. Um, it's not brilliant, and in a, <laughs> this circularity, you'd be here for another half hour or so going through just proving what can calculate, what can't. So for example, if I go there and press F2, then it stays at 1.25, because that's not circular. Okay, go to that one and press F2, and enter, and then it goes to zero, because it's in the circular path. So not wildly exciting at this stage, but I'm browsing down through then uh, to look for um, the extent of the circularity. It's still that row 150 at the top there, and I'm going down to around 300, whatever it was. Through all the maintenance stuff, now that, remember, hadn't changed initially, um, and I was concerned whether that was in the circular path or not. Clearly, it's nothing to do with circularity at all. Uh, browsing further down through, further down through, uh, I can see, and I'm looking at column D, remember, uh, and this is quite critical for this sort of analysis because look, there's lots and lots of errors from column E onwards, but column D looks reasonably clear. So I'm rattling down through, in fact, if I just remind you of what we saw there, um, column D was a bit of a mess up here in this financing section with the net cash, cash and overdraft. It then clears up, senior debt we excluded beforehand, uh, maintenance reserve account we can now exclude even though we can see all of this okay so i'm looking down column d because that's where the error should be if it's not calculating uh, dsra is not circular even though there are lines running through it the sub debt isn't apparently circular net interest not circular down through the shareholders and suddenly i'm down here in this cash cascade okay now what i can see here and I hope you know about Cash Cascades, because when you come on my courses, it's, I always say it's the best thing in the whole, whole four days if you do my combined course. Um, cash Cascade is brilliant, because it's, it's effectively a restatement of the model in, in, in this minor section at the bottom. Uh, and what I can see then, I've got numbers, and the, the, the line cuts off to column E from column D. As I browse down through here, I can see lots of zeros, which is good, because they calculated, that's fine. And then sat there at the bottom, I can see an error for dividends paid. Now it happens that dividends paid is on this screen. I'm just pressing F2. Ben doesn't need to write that. Um, but I'm looking up here and it says dividends and there's some error. Oh, hang on a sec. The earnings available for dividends is zero and the cash available has got an error in it. So let's have a look at that dividends formula. It's a comparison of those two. And I look at the uh, dividends formula as well. And Okay, I'm not teaching range names today and, and features of range names and functions, but there's an error in that formula. Uh, and the error is that um, if you're using a range name and you're using functions like max, min, sum, count, virtually any function, um, Excel treats the range description as not just a single cell, but as an entire range. That's not a bug. Uh, and the solution I'm going to show you now is not a bug fix, but just to show you um, the correct way of using a cell reference, sorry, a range name in a formula like that is to prefix the name with a plus sign. Uh, the explanation for that I'll do separately in another webinar, but just notice this then, that's my sneaking suspicion. That's what the error uh, is causing the circularity. And instantly you can see the whole thing 
moved across the screen. I think I've hit pay dirt. If I copy that revised formula across the row, there you go, the circularity has now disappeared. Okay. Also then, because that was the circularity, the circularity was trapped then in the circular code. The circular code is now linear, so the error is purged, it's gone. And so if I look at the output sheets then, to my ultimate relief, there are no divide by zero errors left. And so that is one very powerful way of using uh, circularity as an iteration, or the iteration with the circularity, to work out where the circularity is in the first place. Um, and it works beautifully, that technique. I, I, just, I used it last year uh, with a client who actually had five circularities, five separate circularities in one model. And uh, it took me the best part of four hours to, to pin down all of them. But that is exactly the method I used, was to uh, introduce an error, see where it went to, flush it through the whole model, and then uh, reset it. The benefit of that approach, then, is the error value is only in the circular section. The other feature we saw with circularities is that um, you can make them go to zero. That's not wildly diagnostic, is it? Because things can be inherently uh, zero anyway. But if you introduce the error value, then that ain't going to go until you finally fix the circularity itself. So hopefully from that, then you've seen a, 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 some contrived use of uh, iteration there to solve a deliberate circularity, uh, which uh, as Marco suggested, there are other ways of doing interest uh, calculations that aren't circular at all. Um, but the idea that if you do use iteration, then use the switch method. But also then uh, for this uh, error detection method of using iteration powerfully to find out where the circularity is in the first place. So I think that's uh, covered everything I was intending to cover in this session. I don't think there's any more slides there. Uh, any more questions from Japan? And shaking his head. Um, so I'll wrap things up now. If you do have any questions about this uh, topic, uh, it's quite an interesting one, uh, do drop me an email after the course. We'll get in contact with, with, with Ben. Uh, we do uh, deal with circularities on our training, and, and they crop up during our training courses as well. And, and so it's, it's, it's quite a useful thing to, to know about how, how you can resolve these things. Um, we've got the batch of courses. I'll just uh, go through those briefly. Uh, project finance methodology and techniques and the extended techniques. Um, what we don't have on the slide is the P3 PFI courses, which is the model you just saw. Uh, but the same sort of uh, concepts apply to all of them. Uh, also, uh, a slightly different flavour there, the assessing and interrogating financial models. It's one of my favourite courses. Um, and that's to do with uh, review or peer review of other people's spreadsheets. Um, so the first two are to do, deal with construction, constructing models from scratch. Uh, assessing and interrogating is considering and examining other people's models. Uh, also, uh, we have a program uh, called Oak Operas Analysis Kit, and we have a, a regular series of webinars on that, uh, usually once a month. Uh, that's from my colleague Rui, um, so he can t talk you through the features of that software. Uh, also, our webinar program, I think we've gone into our second quarter, third quarter uh, program, so that's either out now or is going to be released imminently after the Easter break. Um, so do sign up for those and let your colleagues know. Uh, also, um, after I finished uh, this presentation, um, it gets recorded on the cloud, and my colleague Rui will then do the, the magic with his Camtasia audit, uh, edit software, uh, and we'll post up the videos, uh, and that applies to all the previous videos as well. So if you have signed up for this, uh, we'll send you a link to the recording to go over it again. Uh, but other than that, I should ask once more, are there any questions? And Ben say no, so thank you all for attending, and thank you for the very good questions that came up, and I hope you found that useful, and see you next time. Thank you very much.